welcome to the public lecture, uh, public lecture series of the NMML. We have the great pleasure of having with us today Professor Makhan Lal is speaking to us on British role in separatist politics in India. Professor Makhan Lal is currently senior fellow at the NMML. He is a distinguished archaeologist and historian has taught in Manaras Hindu University and Aligarh Muslim University. And then in 1998, he became the founder director of Delhi Institute of Heritage Research and Management. Welcome you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the topic of today's lecture, British role in separatist politics in India, is very important and relevant and it's a it's an immense topic one can say because uh, we know that it was uh, this separatist politics promoted and nurtured by the british which ultimately led to the partition of india in 1947 and its reverberations continue to do this, to this day and in so many diverse ways I think uh, his focus is probably on the religious or as we today call it uh, communal uh, se divisions or separatism. But the fact is that from the very beginning, the British had very carefully planned how to perpetuate their rule in India. So they pitted caste against caste, religion against religion, region against region, language against language and class against class so all possible divisions that could be created or nurtured were created and nurtured by the british as a part of their imperial policy and from their point of view it appeared to be the most natural thing because if you want to rule a foreign country especially a great immense country like india you obviously wanted to see to it that uh, the indians do not get united to oppose the british rule and as uh, i believe professor makhanlal is going to uh, discuss today these uh, uh, these policies of the british got a boost in the post 1857 period because the first war of independence as we describe it convinced the british and in the first war of independence they came very close to losing india so it convinced them that unless they uh, craft a new policy of divide and rule, their Raj in this country, their rule in this country would not be long lasting. So they very systematically built up an entire discourse, created suitable knowledge about different sections and parts of the society, different religions, regions, castes, etc., etc., to pit them against one another. Of course, uh, Finally, the freedom struggle was able to unite a large number of Indians. And that's how we gained our independence. But the freedom struggle and the leaders of the freedom struggle did not succeed in preventing the partition of India, which was a direct result of the separatist politics that the British had encouraged for 150 years with these few words once again i welcome professor makhalal and i welcome all members of the audience who are with us today both online and in the seminar hall and uh, request professor makhalal to proceed with his lecture thank you dr mishra very few would be knowing here that i have had the privilege of knowing him Mishaji, almost 22 years now 23. 23 years <laughs> and it has always been a pleasure to sit with him in person or in public and talk many things over actually mishaji said that archaeologist and historian i began my career as a stone age archaeologist and within the during phd period then i did the work on harappan civilization and post-harappan civilization 
which definitely went on to be one of the biggest asset and which gave me the world. If I may interrupt, from Stone Age to 1947, that's a long journey indeed. I don't think any archaeologist would have made such a long And uh, my first book gave me the worldwide reputation and gave me confidence that I can continue. That was on Stone Age and Harappan civilization, post Harappan. Anyway, in order to understand uh, in order to live only in a stone age or Harappan civilization or earlier, gave me very uncomfortable feeling. And I thought that everything I'm trying to understand today does not find the connection with the past. And therefore, I decided to extend my journey to understand this society. And to understand this society, you have not only to think in terms of Complete history and complete history does not mean like studying your youth period, but go back to childhood from the end. And therefore, when I you know wrote four books on modern history, they have been very well received. And when I decided to take up the research exclusively on some topic, I proposed caste and religion in Indian politics. These are two biggest issues today. In Indian politics. I'm grateful to Nehru Memorial Museum, which thought that topic is worth pursuing. And they awarded me senior fellowship. I'm very grateful to them. And as a part of this research project, the first lecture was Roots of Caste in Indian Politics, which I had given. And I think that is there on the website, Mishaji, uh, Roots of Caste in Indian Politics. One can see. Today, I'm going to talk about British role in separated politics in India. And when we talk about separatist politics, I would like to narrate here, I'm not going to follow my friend Kapil Kumar's friend's strategy, not Kapil's strategy. He has got a friend that he told this story. He talks on modern India and also on partition. So his friend, if he's giving lecture in London or you know, Oriental College London, he'll say, look, British tried very hard to keep India united, but what they can do? Poor. Congress and Muslim League were bent upon dividing India. So British were helpless. But he will give lecture here or in Delhi. He'll say, look, Congress did everything to avoid the partition, but Muslim League and British, they collided. So partition happened. But he also had gone to Karachi, Islamabad, Lahore to give lecture. And there he will say, look, Muslim League was not interested in dividing India. It's the British and Congress who did it for the power. Well, I'm not going to follow that, Kapil. I can assure you that I'm going to be very ruthless and very ruthless with evidence, whatever it is. And uh, I can tell you one thing. The first war of independence, if you call it, you call it mutiny, you call it 1857. That was a le great learning experience for British. As Mr. Ji rightly said, they almost lost it. Sometimes you must see the maps. Stop reading. Just see the maps of advances of armies, nothing else. Not a single word, just arrows and moving armies. You will see what was happening because that's where I started my journey studying what is happening. No written words, maps. And uh, the solidarity shown by Indian people was another red herring for them, that what to do. But one great thing we must admire, even in war, watch that me if they have got something good to admire. British are not like Indians. The moment you win, you start celebrating. Forget about everything. Forget about your enemies. Forget about your friends. And many times, even the family members celebrate alone or celebrate with. No, British did not do that. After 1857, on 15th July 1858, British constituted a commission, and it's a very famous commission report, Jonathan Peel Commission report. He was Major General Jonathan Peel Commission report. Or kabi thoda bhot usse bhi agar aapko jada padna hoga, to Penderel Moon ki ek kitab hai Divide and Quit. About Penderel Moon, it is said that the most brilliant and genius ever ICS produced in the white race. Penderel Moon is also the co-editor of Transfer of Power. Yes. yes. Read that. <clears throat> what they did was, on Jonathan Peel's report, 
submitted and after reading that british were aghast that and they went for the filing time that despite all the things we did for indian army we did for indian bureaucracy why they went against it, us and they zeroed on and after zeroed on the then secretary of state for india in british government wrote to indian viceroy then divide and rule you cannot rule india without dividing it and divide and rule comes from that letter of secretary of state i am forgetting the name if you can recall but never they, i have got that all the details on the including letters and everything i am talking about is i will keep giving you the original references and rest assured i am emotionally very attached and proud of this library because for my all materials i am here this library has all the material which i will be quoting from all the original documents so what they do is divide and rule divide and rule was not confined to hindus and muslims mr ji said gave the hint divide and rule vertically horizontally and divide and rule hindus and muslims congress versus muslim league after all congress was not only of hindus it was for everybody congress and muslim league congress versus congress can you believe this title congress versus congress because within the congress they created the division naram dal ho garam dal ho terrorist group ho chahe silent group ho tilak and tokhle they got divided one was against british sent to kalapani other was british educate and brought gandhi on the recommendation of british themselves these documents are coming slowly and also you have to read gandhi ji's own collection and you will find that how he was persuaded and how british tried to get gandhi elected in 1914 in absentia elected as congress president though they did not succeed but later on what kind of correspondence goes on between gokhale and british and gokhale goes to uh, london london to africa and all these things were work out to that level hindus versus hindus caste system i have given lot of details how hindus were pitted against hindus muslims were pitted against punjabis were pitted against rest ruling class you rightly pointed out ruling class against the rest it is one of the most amazing thing to is study in indian context however my project today today's talk my project includes all this you know muslim congress hindus but today i shall be concentrating on certain things i decided to concentrate because of lot of debate going on in television going on in newspapers and i have been part of that debate that disturbed me a bit that even the best of historians are not looking into documents and therefore i shall be concentrating on partition as i told that material has lot lot and you can't really complete everything in one hour but then whatever you complete you complete in complete way whatever you want to talk do it round it day and that is why i will be concentrating only on certain aspects and we shall in that way deal with today three aspects hindu versus muslim congress versus muslim league and little bit congress versus congress if the time permits because congress versus congress was one of the major area british concentrated to divide and weaken certain group which were harmful to them and promote only those group which were very beneficial to them and never and if you read the history from 1917 when gandhi ji comes in the power not power in politics to 1947 and find out who did what kind of harm in terms of in the name of freedom struggle whether you supported or you were really fighting that that is the and therefore one may say that my topic is of caste and religion in indian politics why we go back in the past so i should begin from 1947 but i think that you should we should all realize one thing as a historian you cannot understand the present 
without the full knowledge of the past. That's fundamental thing you must realize. Present cannot be understood without the knowledge of past. You cannot your build your future until unless you are in control of present. All these things are very important. So let's go back to 1857, which has got the basic relevance to my topic. 1857 loss. One was almost lost, but one, another was completely lost. Almost lost is British, came back to power, but one power which completely lost was the Muslim power or Mughal power or what is Islamic power. So Islam, Islam has nothing to do at the moment. I would like to refrain from there. Islam is a matter of faith and that need not to be discussed in such kind of situation. I'm very clear about that. And uh, this loss of power definitely impacted very strongly the Muslim ruling class, not really the, you know, people living in villages, people living in uh, smaller cities and all that. This shift of power structure very strongly impacted the ruling class. And one of the best few liners are from Peter Hardy. Muslims of British India, he says, there was a definite shift in the land holding within the Muslim community itself, with those having Mughal past losing to those with a British future. It's a beautiful sentence. So it's not me, it's not X, Y, Z. It's a British historian saying that within the Muslim community, because Hindu communities were not big land owner in any way till the Muslim period. Within the Muslim community, because of land owning situation, there was a definite shift and beautifully put. Losing those having Mughal past and to those with a British future. So within that situation, and Muhammad Habib, Mujib, Aligarh historian, you know him. He also concluded the same. This class successfully, and he has given the huge list that this is there right from Mahara, you know, Nawab Chatari to everybody else. This class, the class which saw the future with British, this class successfully converted attention of the government, converted the attention of the government and people towards its own need and grievances, and thus gave a wrong direction to the political and social thought of Muslim community. And this, we are talking about is 1862, 1863. Very clearly, such historians, those who have command for uh, Arabic sources, Persian sources, Urdu sources, English, they are saying that there is new class which came up having future with Britain. They successfully diverted the attention of British towards their own need as the public need. So therefore, appropriated everything that belonged to the even general public to themselves. And that was a fantastic thing. And it was at this juncture, as I said, that I shall be concentrating only on certain things. And if the in another uh, time when there are space, I could talk about within other communities. It was at this time Sir Sayyid Ahmad came in picture. Let us recall that Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was in East India Company's service from 1838 to 1868. Very clearly, he was in job. And after the loss of power, after the loss of power, 1857 war, he was very clear that now British are here to stay. Muslims can't afford to oppose British. And also, British saw in Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan a person whom they can use against one community to other, and even against the Muslims themselves who had a different view. So as Mr. Ji had pointed out, they pitted against each other, no indiscriminately. Hindu no, nothing of the kind. And that is what uh, most ruthless rulers do. 
and we just do it in plenty because if you somebody was in recent time asking me that you have lived so long in uk what is your opinion about sunak and trust prime ministership and they were all elated sunak is going to win sunak is going to win i said you have no idea about british forget okay, about sunak abhi sunak ki char generation aur aage bhi nahi jeet payegi there is something below his skin also sorry to use this kind of expression so there is something below his skin also and one never forgets that easily we forget this and that thing so british convinced all this correspondence exists one of the best parties if you want to study this period nehru memorial museum library where there are all the original papers and then he spent some time in aligarh sir sayed house the archives of sir sayed documents i have had the privilege of spending time there also and this uh sir sayed in 1963 wrote and this is one of the most oft quoted quoted statement blood of mohammedan conquerors and that of the country was not the same mohammedan conquerors and that of the country was not the same their manners and customs not the same that in their hearts people don't like them is talking about Muslim community, I told you how they don't like them. And the best part is, it's not quoted from Sir Syed Ahmed. I have not taken it from Sir Syed Ahmed. This bit translated by Shah Muhammad. Right? You may be knowing that many of you, a book is there in market available. Uh, speeches and writings of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, translated by Shah Muhammad, who was professor and head of department of political science in Aligarh Muslim University, a great friend. i took it from kk ajiz this quotation i picked up when i was reading kk ajiz i can tell you one of the finest historian pakistan has produced and recently when i was reading some news and something else about pakistan so one of the jokes was cartoon was published in pakistan magazine teacher sishti of the pakistan have gone on a strike for better pay and niche say if you don't increase our salaries we are going to teach the real history of pakistan that's the we are going to teach the real history of pakistan but that's a kk ajiz and that's his four volume history of idea of pakistan char volume mein aa hai i got it here itself and then in 1860 itself sir sayed wrote a pamphlet called loyal mohammedan sir india and remember all these things were written on the instigation background information abhi do char ke baad hum aayenge 10 20 naam batayenge aapko background information to sir sayed and his colleagues what should be written it was properly vetted then only it was published can you believe that and there are there and then sir sayed was asked to write that muslims and christians winners are ahle kitab those who don't know the meaning of ahle kitab just for their knowledge i should tell you belong to the same book meaning they why what he was hinting at whether you are a jew you are a christian you are a muslim you all have the roots in one book ahle kitab means belonging to one book all of you are brothers and he goes to the extent that please don't consider british as enemy consider them as friend and this was accepted as dictum right up to 1947 because many of you will agree not muslims again i am not using word muslim and very careful about it because i want my head to remain on my shoulder i am saying Muslim League did not participate in freedom struggle because it followed Sultan Ahmad Khan and his successors. He writes beautifully. I mean, I'm not going to read everything. The British rule in India is the most wonderful phenomenon in the world has ever seen. That's how Sir Syed begins his form, loyal Muhammadan. And he goes on to say that British have done great thing. 
they are ahle kitab we must develop relationship with them because what they say it's our earnest desire concluding para here earnest desire that english rule should not only last for long not only last for long long time but that it should be everlasting eternal that is writing is dcvcq and you will be surprised that this was vetted by one of the person called w w hunter who had written in 1871 indian muslims so hunter vetted so this is the way it was not everything very smooth anything going on just like that and he declared then he continued on hindu muslim unity so hunter had corrected that i mean fortunately you will be shocked to know in sir sayyid's archive that corrected version in hunter's writing is there that's sometimes we nay logo se hum nahi ummeed karta isliye ki bhai unko paper bhi publish karna hai interview mein bhi jana hai dena hai yahan to sab se khali ho gaye na at least i don't have to submit my bio data anybody for anything so i can afford to spend years together without producing anything but not the younger generation so my my feeling is senior people should take up this kind of thing and he declared sir sayyid was you know how he was provoked that in 1860s itself after british came they proposed that rather than farsi state language government language should be hindi because hindi is spoken and understood by more than 90% people farsi may be spoken by 10, 2% written and understood to be even less again he was provoked and he wrote that this is unacceptable and it divide is being widened and widened and widened and he said it was impossible for hindus and muslim to progress as a single nation for anyone to work for both of them simultaneously so he's talking about 1860 not talking in 1937 1938 or 1939 and he wrote to moshin mulk moshin mulk was general secretary of anglo mohammedan oriental college because sir sayyed has given up so he was successor in on april 29 1870 this this proposal proposal of hindi replacing farsi this proposal which will make hindu muslim unity impossible the result will be that hindus and muslim will be completely separated unquote so this is how things began and finally where the whole thing bursts out and as i said that i am going to talk about hindu muslim unity and congress and muslim league today some other day hindus versus hindu and you know punjabis versus other in on march 1888 march 16 1888 he gives a speech in meerut and this is one of the most elaborate speech and most amazing expression of his own thoughts his speech is big one and i'm not going to read but at least couple of lines are must he begins in the middle i'm quoting now suppose that british are not india taking with them their cannon their splendid weapons and everything then who would be ruler of india the question is agar british ko aap nahi support karenge wo chale gaye apna sab le deke kaun rule karega it is possible that under these circumstances two nations first time he i am making his own speech reading his own speech it is is it possible that under these circumstances two nations dash mohammedans and hindus could sit on the same throne and remain equal in power two nation for the first time for two communities came to be used and not only that in the view of any kind of attempt any kind of disturbance and threat to muslim what is said in marriage this open maidan mein ho raha hai koi band kamre mein guftgu nahi ho rahi hai he says if that situation arises matlab if that situation arises threat arises then our musliman brothers pathan should come out as sword of locust from their mountain valleys and make the river of blood flow from their frontiers 
on the north to extreme end of Bengal. So kind of threat is also there that look, Afghanistan is there, Balochistan is there, Iran is there, and people are going to come to save us. Where was the threat to save? A imagine threat ko leke is tarah ki baate kahi kahi, there was no threat till 18, uh, 88, aisi koi baat to thi nahi hindu taraf se ki koi kahe ki aap yaha ke nahi hai, waha ke nahi hai, ye chale. But what he says is very clearly, God has given the light of religion of Quran, present our guidance and ordained them to us as friend, ordained them to which is as a friend, ahle kitab, and therefore we have to have relationship with not with Hindus, but Muslim nations should have relationship with all kinds of things, with Christians. Sir Sayyid is on record in writing and speech, if need be, wine and dine with British, including eat pig. Aaj kahenge to mushkil ho jayegi. Ye Sir Sayyid ne kaha hai, shayad jo log mere khayal se jamte hain ki where it was all said. Who are the people correcting the draft? Who are the people widening the gap? Some of these people were Philip Morrison. Morrison Hall hai Aligarh Muslim University mein commemorate his contribution to this. Philip Morrison, Alfred Lyle, Alfred Lil Hall bhi hai, Aligarh Muslim University, W.W. W. Hunter, and what Hunter wrote about Sir Sayyid in his own book, which was, Sir Sayyid was alive then. So he said Sir Sayyid was the first able, oh, sorry, Sir Sayyid was first able and somewhat impassionate advocate of Muslims. So Sir Sayyid, has been declared by British themselves, not as a great of Hindus or India or Hindustan, a straight way as Muslim. And, and instigating W.S. Blunt, who was also associated with anglo -Mandal. I told them if Muslims only knew their power, they would not be neglected. Neglect kaun kar tha? Who was in power to? You see, neglecting means those who are in power, they are neglecting. And if Blunt is writing, if only they knew, who are neglecting them? They can samjhana bhi bota asaan nahi hota na. Bada muskil ho jata hai kabhi kasu ya. And uh, Sir Sayyid's open declaration, these kind of things to British, did not go unanswered, did not go uncared. And the first grant of 10,000 pounds came for Menglo Mohammedan Oriental College from British government. Till then, no grant was given to anyone. Anyway, sometimes we must, as I said, we are, if we are studying a period in which many countries are involved, so best is to study on what is going on the other side. And I have been very fortunate to get enough history books from the other side of the world. I've been very fortunate. And uh, normally, abhi to bada hangama hua na, Savarkar is the founder of Two Nation Theory and he gave this theory in 1939. About long. Likha bhi hai is pe. Jalil ne Toh nahi. What Pakistan books write? Serious books. Bashir Ahmadar is one of the most respected scholar, always invited Oxford, Cambridge, Philadelphia, and so on. Bashir Ahmadar reads rightly. Rightly, the father figure of Pakistan and creator of Pakistan is Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. And he says, Pakistan is in reality the result of whole scheme of things as envisaged by this grand old man, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, who represented in his person the ideology and inspiration of whole Muslim nation of this subcontinent. I mean, so, in Pakistan books, sometimes myths have to be unraveled. I'm not saying that they should be broken. There is one of the basic idea that Sir Sayyid was pioneer in education among the Muslims. That's myth. You have to read some of the books on education of Muslim education published in India and abroad and also in Pakistan. 
and this is a myth created by British and Sir Sayyid themselves, British themselves. In central provinces, data is there. They, it's not my data, it's published by Bashir Ahmad Dara and others. In central provinces where the Muslim population was 2.5%, in the administration, Muslim civil servants accounted for 36.7%. Population is 2.5%, but their participation in administration is 36.7%. Similarly, in the realm of education, total Muslim population of 1.9% went to school in comparison to 8% of total Hindu population, 0.8%. It's amazing sometimes. Thus, here the ratio was 2.5 times more in favor of Muslims. Lekin usse zada gajab ki baat, ek kitab hai, Hafiz Malik ke. All these I got the few things from Pakistan, I mean, good friends. Hafiz Malik ke kitab hai about education of Muslims in three parties in India. And he reaches the conclusion within quotes, Muslims repudi repudiation of modern education was a myth that Sir Sayyid himself created and then assiduously disseminated. Khudi create kiya, aphir khudi khatam kiya. In support of his thesis, Malik provided ample evidence, he writes within quote, from 1882 to 1898, Muslim graduation from Sayyid's MOA college total 122. A college say, Sayyid's education was While those in the government run Allahabad University alone, 250. It is intriguing, continue quotation, it is intriguing to hypothesize that even in absence of Sir Sayyid modern education among the Muslims could have spread. This is a difficult आप अभी भी कह रहे हैं बिना सर सैयद की एजुकेशन नहीं होता अरे इलाहाबाद यूनिवर्सिटी एक ही यूनिवर्सिटी में उनसे दो गुना ज्यादा है नो लिव सर सैयद अलोन आफ्टर दैट आई मीन अ बिग चैप्टर व्हिच आई हैव डन सर सैयद डाइड इन 1898 एंड अलीगढ़ मुस्लिम यूनिवर्सिटी and other person was Mustaq Hussain, later known as Nawab Vikarul Mulk. They carried on, they carried on legacy of Sir Sayyid, but the Gajab ki chi jay hai, jo is library mein bhi original document mein rakhi hai, aur is library ki ek asset jabar jast hai. Sarifuddin Tuirzada edited 11 or 12 volumes of Muslim League documents. Iske siwa aap kahi nahi milega. This library, I am very proud of this library, Ravi. You don't get, and it's one of the best places I sit. This is the one where a lot of people were going to go to depression and going to go to the house. So, in that one, I would sit in the library from 9 to 5 in my life. And what you find is incredible correspondence between British officers, Mohsen Mulk, and Mehdi Hassan Sahib. How to create Muslim League. And in that, there is a lot of correspondence back and forth going between Lieutenant Governor of North Provinces, J.B. Latroch, Principal MOA College, W.A. Archibald, Sir Sayyid Academy K. officers, Dunlop Smith, who was Principal Secretary to Viceroy. They keep corresponding among themselves that how to create a forum for Muslims and Muslim alone. A kiss the rest of representation, Banaya Jai, a representation, Agar Unhone Banaki Veja, Amosi Mulkne, so Archibald Cox will go through, correct it, principal of Emory College, then he will send it to Dunlop Smith, Viceroy Kevo, Kisko Dek Lijiki, Viceroy Sapo, is a inconvenience now. All this goes on, and in that, Minto gets involved later on, Viceroy. And one of the most beautiful correspondence that goes on is between Marlo Minto and uh, what was his name? Just a minute. Uh, sorry, Marley and Monte reforms, very famous. But one of the most beautiful correspondence goes on between Minto and Marley. Minto wanted 100% Muslim League to be created exactly the way it was being planned. Dunlop Smith and others, Minto became a party to it. Whereas Marley, who was Secretary of State, did not want this. And actually, Marley wrote 
so much in writing that it will be bad for the India. He does not say that it will be bad for Hindus, it will be bad for Muslims, it will be bad for them, it will be bad for India. When it happened, the Muslim League became made, Dunlop Smith succeeded, and Marlow Minto succeeded. So, having been hoodwinked, Minto succeeded in hoodwinking Marlow, so Marlow wrote a book. He wrote a book in Marlow. पर्सनल पेपर्स में है जो छपे हैं कुछ नहीं छपे हैं बट इंडिया ऑफिस लाइब्रेरी लंदन में है उनका लेटर है लास्ट लाइन है आई वोट फॉलो यू अगेन इन आवर मोहम्मडन डिस्प्यूट ओनली आई रिस्पेक्टफुली रिमाइंड यू वंस मोर दैट इट वॉज योर स्पीच अबाउट देयर एक्स्ट्रा क्लेम दैट फर्स्ट स्टार्ट द मुस्लिम एयर जो घोड़ा दौड़ना शुरू किया है वो मारलो मिनट तुम्हारी स्पीच से शुरू है और मारलो को वो लेटर It's very pathetic that even a British, British are master in expression, but even British could feel that this was happening at the cost of Indian society. And I will be ten fifteen minutes short. For a day, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Muslim League ban gayi, then it becomes a history. 2006 me bani hai, aur uske baad jo hua, so hua. फिर भी कांग्रेस कह लीजिए इंडिया कह लीजिए एफर्ट्स टू नॉट फर्दर डिवाइड द कम्युनिटीज वेंट ऑन एंड लखनऊ पैक्ट वाज द रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट वेयर सेपरेट रिप्रेजेंटेशन फॉर मुस्लिम्स वाज एक्सेप्टेड एंड आई डोंट वांट टू गो इन डिटेल बट सपोज बंगाल 52.6 परसेंट वाज पॉपुलेशन 40 परसेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन वॉज गिवेन माइनस ट्वेंटी proportionate population pay bihar 10.5 but proportionate representation 25% plus 14 bombay 25 25 4 33% which anyway sab pura agar dete jaiye to total proportional population se representation was 30.16% 34.16% was more representation and tilak it was tilak who signed with jinnah this Remember that Garam Dal Neta Tilak signed this Lucknow Pact with Jinnah, and when he said, when he was asked, "Why did you do this?" he said, "In order to keep brothers together, elder brother has to sacrifice." That was Tilak's word. In order to keep brothers together, family together, elder brothers have to sacrifice. Has to sacrifice. But what was the reaction of the Muslim League? Jinnah. Then the president of Muslim League said, "Our constitutional battle may have been said to have been won already by half." Now this is the way different way of looking at. Jinnah says our constitutional battle may be said to have been half won already, and even before the ink could dry on that pact, Raja Majhar Majharulak of Mahmudabad, Yamaj Jinnah. Made the demand in writing, and Fazlul Haq wrote a letter, open letter to newspapers. To me, the future of Islam in India seems to be wrapped in gloom and anxiety. Every instance of collapse of Muslim power in the world is bound to have an adverse influence on the political importance of our community in India. कोई चीज़ अगर मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी ऊपर सऊदी अरेबिया में हो रहा है, इजिप्ट में हो रहा है, फ्रांस में हो रहा है. इंडिया में कैसे इंटरफ पड़ेगा मैं समझ नहीं पाया एनी वे आई लिव इट इट दैट देन एडवेंट ऑफ गांधी कम्स इन रोल ऑफ गांधी मुस्लिम लीग जिन्ना इट्स अ कम्प्लीटली अनदर मैटर व्हिच एज रवि हैज सेड दैट ब्रिटिश यूज्ड एवरीबॉडी ब्लेम हैज नॉट टू बी वन कम्युनिटी और वन लीडर और वन पॉलिटिकल पार्टी इज नोन दैट्स व्हाई गांधी ब्रिटिश एंड ऑलवेज से इट विल टेक अनदर टू आवर्स फॉर मी टू पॉइंट आउट बट The continuity of all this, 1917 ki, 16 ki continuity. Alama, who is one of the most favorite subject of Dr. Mishra, and he has written fantastic articles on that. They are available, and I would request all of you to read him for one reason: how to delineate the political person out of a poet, how to understand him. 
सेपरेटली एज ए पोएट एज ए तो मैंने भी कोशिश किया थोड़ा और उसमें क्या होता है कि अलामा इकबाल सारे जहां से अच्छा हिंदुस्तान हमारा अरे अठारह उन्नीस साल के थे जब लिखा था लेकिन एक जब वो लंदन की यात्रा की और शिकवा लिखी शिकवा और शिकवा के बाद की चीजें पढ़िए हमेशा दो हिस्से में करके पढ़िए तो अच्छा लगेगा नाउ अलामा इकबाल वॉज नाइनटीन थर्टी मुस्लिम लीग प्रेसिडेंट इन इलाहाबाद फुल स्केट पेपर फुल स्केट लीगल साइज पेपर लीगल साइज इसका डेढ़ा होता है लीगल साइज पेपर सिंगल स्पेस टाइप 17 पेजेस कैन यू इमेजिन सिंगल स्पेस टाइप लीगल साइज पेपर 17 पेजेस स्पोक थ्री आवर्स इन इलाहाबाद एज प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ मुस्लिम लीग 300 पीपल अटेंडेड इन इलाहाबाद कांग्रेस अजमेशन वॉज ऑल्सो देयर इन वर्ल्ड वॉर फोर थाउजेंड पीपल एनी वे दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट टाइम things were said andama ikbal is not a ordinary person i do consider him one of the best mind aur jab wo kehte hain ki hamare dada kaul the musliman nahi the wo kaul brahmad the aur unhone ye bhi likha hai na ravi ji ne bahut sundar kiya hai i am a rose from paradise of kashmir look at me from india you will never find it again son of a brahmin allama is right in son of a brahmin familiar with mystical knowledge of molana rumi and sanskrit tabrez my ancestor will were all worshippers of idol like lot of mannath idol has been compared with lot of mannath labor the list i will read this little bit and mm-hmm. so that the principle of it is the part of the speech the principle of european democracy cannot be applied to india without recognizing the fact of the communal groups muslim demand for a creation of muslim state within india is therefore perfectly justified the resolution of all parties muslim conference at delhi is to my mind wholly inspired by this noble idea of a harmonious whole which instead of stifling and respecting individuals of its component whole afford them to chance to fully working out of the possibilities of many latent aur uske baad wo kehte hain personally i would like go further than the demand embodies in it i would like to see punjab north west frontier provinces sindh and baluchistan amalgamated into a single state self government within british empire or without british empire formation of a consolidated north west indian state appears to me the final destiny of Muslims, he is talking in 1930 as presidential address. He is not talking about a Muslim state. He is giving you the geography of it, where it has to be. Huh? And one person who is the least remembered, least loved, and definitely least credited is Rahmat Ali. I don't know how many of you have heard the Rahmat Ali. Ramat Ali wrote in 1934 when Gold Medal Conference, Round Table Conference was a pamphlet. Pakistan, now or never. There's a title of pamphlet, Pakistan. So here was the man. Allama gave the geography. Here was the man in 1934 giving the name of the state, and he says the new name, new state has to be named as Pakistan. and one of the part very small part is our religion culture history tradition economic system laws inheritance succession and marriage are basically and fundamentally different from those of people living in west of india we do not intertwine we do not intermarry our national customs and calendars and even our diet and dresses are different and therefore deserve and must demand the recognition of separate national status by the grant of separate federal constitution for rest of india rahmat ali said that it's incredible that rahmat ali came to live in pakistan in 1947 goes back to cambridge again he was found to be too hot a potato too hot a burning coal too hot 
the iron to, to be touched by anybody goes back to Cambridge, dies in Pune It's an amazing thing. After that, Jinnah story is too long, and everybody knows all that. I will say that read Jinnah and Sasaya together, you will find that Jinnah has not said even one word anything new which has not been said by Sir Sayyid and Allah Iqbal and Jinnah's Lahore speeches. I say and I have published that Lahore speech of verbatim reiteration of Allah Iqbal's speech in Lahabad. It's unbelievable. Now, as I have taken all the time, but I can tell you one thing in two, three minutes, when we use, when we British used to divide they did not divide in Indian Muslim. Lal Bal Pal, they were sidelined for Gokhale and Buddhas. That was the kind of division. So Gokhale became a great champion and educator with Viceroy, and Tilak went to Monday. Both, both belong to the same city. I have had the privilege of doing PhD from that city, and I have had the privilege of being a student of very same college, Deccan College, where Tilak was a student. And my room was just beside Tilak one, because Tilak's room was locked for it as, as a memorial. Then you know how Swarajis were separated from the mainstream of the Congress. You know how to counter Patel and other groups within the Congress. Congress Socialist Party was created with the full support of British mm -hmm. with Jawaharlal Nehru mm -hmm. as a front man. And after they were ordered or marginalized, mm -hmm. you know how Nehru treated Congress. Nehru was one of the great consummate politicians, nothing more, nothing less than that. But nevertheless, then bogey of communism against Sardar Patel was creation of British, not, not Nehru or not Congress Socialist Party. That also needs to be looked at. Yeah. But one of the most incredible part that British paid was on 29th April 1946. 29th 1946, since then Congress had no elected president for the six years. Molana was the only president. By that time, it was very clear that whoever is president of the Congress is going to be offered to form the government, meaning thereby the Prime Minister of India. At that time, at that time, 15 Congress committees were there, and as per the Congress Constitution, only Congress committees could nominate and elect the president, nobody else. Congress Working Committee did not have any power into it. After 15 Congress Committee on 29th April 1946, 12 nominations were received. They were all for Sardar Patel. Of the 15, 12 nominations received, all for Sardar Patel, mm -hmm. three abstained. They did not nominate anyone. Now, this scene is very beautifully described, Raj Mohan Gandhi's book, and also on certain documents. Unbelievably, 29th April ke documents aapko Congress Party ke office mein nahi milega. Yahan mein ne bohut dhuna, yahan bhi nahi mila. Antata Kapil ji le aaye, mein bhi le aaya. Lekin wo us din ki ek proceeding aapko nahi milega. Hota kya hai? Gandhi ji is sitting here, nomination paper is there, Sadar Patel is there. Jawaharlal Nehru is not there, he is called. Jawahar, nobody has nominated you, Sadar Patel has been nominated by 12. Quietly sitting and then goes away. Rafi Ahmad Kidwai takes the stage and says that, Jawahar says that he will not join the second position, he will not remain in the Congress. Very clearly, Congress is going to be broken. Congress will divide. At this juncture, nobody wanted. Anyway, Sardar Patel withdrew the name. So, so called unopposedly elected. When he was elected, he was nominated. Nominated by whom? Now, read Edwita Mountbatten's diary published by her daughter. Some more documents there and some of the things inside. How much Mount Bittens, when I say not Mount Bitten, Mount Bittens influenced the Indian polity that Nehru became the Prime Minister because of his proximity 
to bound metals and actually i do not understand that daughter children of the couples are willing to publish the original documents but we indians don't want to see this i have no idea why but nevertheless to that extent interference and divide was there sarwar patel has to be divided congress has to be divided nehru has to be pushed away this is just one main time we taken in the kitchen cabinet in that time kitchen sir many populated british so sometime it moved into the room that kind of decisions were taken and that kind of interference was there and i honestly feel it's time that bit by bit by bit things have to be understood clearly and i would like to request all of you are historian but one point many of you even forget to remember many of the story many of the people say to me when i we had a great debate one hour and 20 minutes debate on uh, ask that with one to one uh, sir genu professor mudla mukherjee one hour, one hour 20 minutes on and why do we go back to history why do we go back to history we don't have to go back to history we have to learn to live with history we don't have to live in history as a historian as a people we must learn what happened in the past we have to learn with it we have to live with it we have don't have to run away with it with these words i must confess and apologize that my whatever the work i am doing it's only almost about 3 to 4% i was able to speak today just the very first chapter of the second volume muslim uh, thing but nevertheless i mean if given an opportunity we shall talk more about congress versus congress uh, leaders versus leader and all that and uh, i am always there at informal group and whenever you people like we can always uh, uh, talk there instead of you know blocking this room and we can always request mr ji to spare time to i know time is one casualty with him it's a difficult to thank you very much thank you very much we are now open to questions and comments aminalshi uh, i notice that there is a very strong tendency among indian historians of this period to conveniently put the blame of this divide on the british and the calculated policy of the british however if we look at the movements that occurred in islamic society in india from the time of the collapse of the mughal empire then a totally different picture emerges i have not been able to find any movement within uh, this society maybe you can enlighten me that talks of unity it only talks of the importance of maintaining a separate identity and uh, uh, that is one point second point is that this whole thing about 1857 i think it's time that we should realize that 1857 did not go beyond the vindhyas there was no movement how much movement was there in the south okay you answer this but take one point let you answer this ha. but let me let so according to me. and the um, and the thing is that in delhi itself at the time of 1857 the main religious leader of the muslim community had raised the standard of jihad and it was only the emperor who said we cannot have jihad at this time because most of the people in the army are purviyas they are from up and bihar we cannot alienate them so i think and you know this whole thing of romanticizing iqbal that you know he said i uh, kashmir ka hu call hu ye the thing is that finally we have to come to grips with his contribution i don't think he can be regarded as an advocate of you know uh, propagating a uh, unity he was very clear as soon as he gained his senses that there has to be division all the people that you have also mentioned in your talk they are talking about division none of them is talking about uh, brotherhood so these are some of the things that i want you to point i could be wrong on some of the points you see one thing iqbal i am the last person to romanticize 
but i wanted to clear the smoke screen when they hear every day sare jahan se acha hindustan hamara what happened afterward and you remember when i went to england shikwa was written on the uh, jahaz mein no no after he came after he came back shikwa and after all his political writings i am not advocating i have never said anywhere efforts for unity were there what is very important i wanted to tell one thing very clearly when we blame british always remember who collaborated with them division in the family can take place padosi chahe jitna chahe ki division ho jaye is ghar mein lekin jab tak us ghar ke log nahi chahenge division nahi hoga british wanted to create a division but you collaborated with it so blame is much more on you than the british itself that is what i wanted to say ask over here why did people collaborate with the british that is the question why did the why do why are you vegetarian i eat everything why you are vegetarian why you don't eat at 6 o'clock after 6 o'clock no listen minakshi ji i respect what you are why did the people collaborate why did the people offer rajput offer to fight along with the uh, uh, this muslim army against the rajput themselves there are certain psychological problems over t i will answer that question uh, there's a very fascinating answer but i don't want to bore everyone you yourself will be surprised at the answer that i will give answer please, 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 no. please, if answer is from the original most welcome if answer is in form of opinion No. I have as much right to keep my opinion I, as anybody else. I am not giving any opinion. I am giving information. Right. And my information, it's not work that I have done, but others have done. Parallel with the court histories that were being written in the Mughal court at the behest of the emperors in Persian, Rajput rulers who were Mughal mansabdars. were getting parallel histories written in their courts which were not known to the moguls so there were two contesting viewpoints one was the viewpoint that was being written in the mughal court of which the rajputs were parts but the rajput mansabdars were very clear that posterity should judge them by different yardsticks so man singh so many Look, of issue is how this becomes relevant post 1857 that's important question because that's where we are concentrating uh, otherwise it's a vast subject we can go on but whatever you are saying how does it get reflected in post 1857 that's my quest would be anyway kabir sir there a problem as historian problem to hai hum our problem is <laughs> that what is happening today we try to judge everything from that point of view Now in forty-seven, there was no Al Qaeda or no ISIS active at that time. Same thing, I was seeing someone argued that day. The boast was bitten by the bug of secularism, and he gave space to jihadis in Azad Hind Fauj. The most laughable thing one could see. I like to mention here the myth of eighteen fifty-seven. That it was only up to Abad. Only one has to go and see the museum in the Red Fort. Right from Peshawar to Dibrugarh, borders of Tripura, Sholapur in Maharashtra, Satara in Maharashtra, Belgaon in Karnataka, and the last battle of 1857 was fought in 1869 in Arcot. and down south our problem is and minakshi ji this is one answer i am giving why people become collaborators because it is in the blood of hindus to collaborate with the ruling power main bata raha hu aapko nahi suniye meri baat nahi hindu ji nahi nahi main meri baat suniye 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 nahi main kahunga main bataunga aapko ek astrologer सिंध में एस्ट्रोलॉजिकल वो कर देता है कि यहां इस्लामिक रूल होगा तो सारे जाकर के वहां पे उसके आगे मीर कासिम के आगे वो टेक करके बैठ जाते हैं अपने सिर को सारे बिजनेसमैन और सारे वो वहां पे जाकर दिस इज टोटली रॉन्ग और आज क्या हो रहा है 
नहीं आज क्या हो रहा है मुझे बताइए मैं तो कहूं अगर इसको हिंदू मुस्लिम से देखेंगे कि असली कॉजेज आपको तब तक नहीं पता लगेंगे जब तक आपके सामने एम फाइव की फाइल सामने निकल करके नहीं आ जाती द ब्रिटिशर्स आर नॉट क्रिएटिंग ओनली वन पाकिस्तान इन इंडिया दे आर क्रिएटिंग फाइव पाकिस्तान इन इंडिया हाउ मैनी नो दैट एटी थाउजेंड पीपुल हैड मूव टू हैदराबाद टू टेक रिफ्यूज इट विल बी अनदर पाकिस्तान इट्स ऑन रिकॉर्ड सर सुनिए भोपाल चालीस हजार ट्रेवेंकोर को क्यों अलग कराया जा रहा था इंडिया से वाई वॉज अजमेर द लास्ट स्टेट टू ज्वाइन इंडियन यूनियन इन एटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स नो वन पॉइंट आउट दैट द लास्ट स्टेट टू ज्वाइन इंडियन यूनियन इज नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स अजमेर और फिर जब पटेल फोर्टी नाइन में कहते हैं कि मैं गोवा को जीत लूंगा तो नेहरू क्या स्टेटमेंट देते हैं अरे भाई हम तो अहिंसा से लेकर के आए हैं हमारी दुनिया के सामने क्या होगी जब पौंडीचेरी की बात होती है तब क्या होगी एंड वन थिंग मीनाक्षी जी आई टोटली एग्री विद यू के इसको समझने के लिए पार्टीशन को हमें उन ब्रिटिश एजेंट्स को इंडिया में समझना पड़ेगा जिनके बारे में ब्रिटिशर्स ने कहा कि हु वॉज अवर मोस्ट लॉयल पुलिसमैन इन इंडिया मोस्ट लॉयल ब्रिटिश पुलिसमैन इन इंडिया हु वॉज प्रांटेड हेयर And I'm going to All prove right. it. Thank Whatever you, Gandhiism you talk you. of, thank you, sir. Gandhi and Nehru are the biggest British agents in India who played to the. Ji, ab. Thank you very much, such a nice and enlightening talk, sir. Uh, I have a question. You have quoted. Uh, 1880s speech of some British, uh, some Britisher in which he used the term nation for Hindus and Muslim. You have quoted a Britisher. It is, it is not only. Sir, no, I am telling you not to go far. It's not British. Sir Sayyid Meerat is. Huh? Sir Sayyid Meerat. Huh? 1887 Meerat. Arey, arey, नहीं है मैं आपको डेट बता देता हूँ ये मार्च 16 1888 की सर सैयद की मेरठ की स्पीच है उसमें उन्होंने हिंदू एंड मुस्लिम टू डिफरेंट नेशन कहा या या सर सर माय क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड विद दैट एक्चुअली इन द लेट नाइनटीन सेंचुरी द आइडिया ऑफ नेशन व्हिच वाज एक्चुअली नेशन इमर्ज इन यूरोप द आइडिया Of nation. Yeah, J. H. H. is a big book. It's a big C. H. J. H. H. Is. Yeah, come on. The European slavery will be broken. The European definition of nation. Was not there in late 19th century. Very good. So, so, uh, so, uh, uh, most of the historians writing about that. Uh, so, uh, the the European idea of nation was there, which was ethnic and cultural. So, what is your opinion? I think what that, uh, uh, yeah, I can paraphrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm allowed, I have, 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 I Almost for three and a half thousand years, it is on the net. It has been published. Is India not a nation? It will answer you all the things. Sare three, four thousand words, kafi hota hai. I think yeah. if I am allowed to make yeah. a clarification, he probably did not put it correctly. Uh. From what I gleaned, and correct me if I am wrong, what he was saying was that in the late nineteenth century, the word nation had two meanings in Europe. one was of course nation in the sense of people or community as it is called qom and also 
in Urdu, for example. And the other was the territorial nation state, which had emerged in Europe. If I understood correctly, this is what you were trying to say. So probably you can answer accordingly. You are right. Yeah. You are right. Actually, nation has not just the territorial issues. If you read the France history, especially Carolingian Empire onwards, you will be finding that kingdom is getting divided and getting the name of nation in terms of genealogy, in terms of successors, and in Europe. Actually, nations came into existence on the basis of language also, not only culture also. And actually, when you look at the British writings on India, I have quoted that very extensively on the article I have said, even British are looking at a small region of Andhra Pradesh or Kerala, or especially the common area of Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh and Kerala. People speak three, four languages in within a small area. And there they are saying, Are Baba, yahan to char kilometer ke andar bhi panch nations hue hai. So nation is incredibly overused, misinterpreted, badly abused word. And actually, nation has not been understood correctly. Bharat Varsh mein Pradesh bhi hai, Desh bhi hai, Rashtra bhi hai. Haan, Maharashtra bhi hai. So, kabhi, Maharashtra to aapka shabd hai, hum to literature se leke chal rahe hai, Pradesh bhi hai, Desh bhi hai, Rashtra bhi hai. Hum kautil se leke Rigved hai, Rigved mein bhi Rashtra aya hai. To aap agar wahan leke chaliye, to kabhi kabhi apne hi shabdu mein baat kar liye hai, to bada asan hota hai. और नेशन मैंने जैसे बताया साढ़े तीन हजार वर्ड बहुत बड़ा होता है एंड एक्चुअली आप नेट पे इज इंडिया नॉट ए नेशन इतना टाइप कर लीजिए चार पांच लिंक आपको मिल जाएंगे वीआईएफ के वेबसाइट पे है हमारी अपनी वेबसाइट तो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट वन सरकम स्पाइस तो हम किसी को बताते भी नहीं किसी को याद ही नहीं रहेगा कि आई रन ए वेबसाइट विज नेम इज सरकम स्पाइस कमल जी आप कुछ क्वेश्चन मैं एक्चुअली कॉम के प्रश्न पे और कॉम को कैसे ट्रांसलेट किया जाए उसको नेशन के बतौर किया जा सकता है यानी इस पे नहीं जाऊंगा मैं थोड़ा बाद में सर के प्रेजेंटेशन में 1930s वाला जो मोमेंट है मुझे लगता है वो एक इम्पोर्टेंट मोमेंट के बतौर आपने उसको देखा है इकबाल के रेफरेंस से तो मैं उस पे थोड़ा आपसे एक सवाल रखना चाह रहा था जिज्ञासा मेरी थी जानने की आपका क्या पक्ष है कि आ, तेज बहादुर सप्रू जो कि वो बहुत क्लोजली काम कर रहे थे राम से मैकडोनल्ड के साथ और फर्स्ट राउंड टेबल कॉन्फ्रेंस के दौरान एक प्रस्ताव आया राम से मैकडोनल्ड की तरफ से डोमिनियन स्टेटस का जिसको ऐसा कहा सप्रू साहब ने कि उस समय की जो लीडरशिप है गांधी जी और मालवी जी दोनों ने आउटराइटली रिजेक्ट कर दिया इसके बाद मैकडोनल्ड ने यह भी कहा कि इस तरह का ऑफर शायद आप अचीव कर ले इंडिपेंडेंस लेकिन इस तरह का बढ़िया ऑफर और जो मैं आपको दे रहा हूँ इस तरह की चीज आपको उस समय शायद न मिले और वही वही हुआ भी फोर्टी सेवन में जिस तरह से पार्टीशन के साथ आजादी हासिल हुई तो उस पर मैं चाह रहा था कि आप थोड़ा कुछ आ, कहते और जो बात माउंट बेटन के लिए आपने कही वो तो बिल्कुल सही है विद्यानिवास मिश्र भी उसको कहते हैं कि ब्लैक तो हट गया यूनियन जैक लेकिन माउंट बेटन साहब मौजूद रहे और उन्हीं की रहनुमाई में एक तरह से नए भारत का गठन हुआ इस बार फ्लैग नहीं हटा था उस दिन वाइस से कई साल बाद कई साल बाद की बात वो कर रहे हैं देखिए गांधी जी से पूछा वाई डूड यू चूज जवाहरलाल नेहरू उनका जवाब है राइटिंग में है विश्व जगह अवेलेबल है He is the last Englishman in India. We need a Cambridge-educated hero boy to deal with. Oh, sir, very detailed. And Rajendra Prasad ne usi vakt reaction diya tha. Baad mein nahi. Gandhi has sacrificed a glamorous boy for a lifelong trusted colleague, Sardar Patel. Usi samay kaha tha. Maulana Azad ne. मौलाना आजाद की इंडिया विंस फ्रीडम में कुछ कोर्सेज रोक लिए गए थे तीन चार पन्ने थे बड़ा हंगामा हुआ कि हमारे मरने के इतने साल तीस साल बाद छापा जाए एट्टी सेवन में कांग्रेस नहीं चाहती थी या नहीं सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने छपवा दिया उसमें जो पैरा है वो पढ़ने लायक है उन्होंने भी कहा कि इट वॉज ए रॉन्ग चॉइस वी वर ऑल मिसलेड 
और उसमें नाम भी दिए हैं ब्रिटिश के भी हैं बाई देम दैट सरदार पटेल वुड नॉट बी द राइट पर्सन बट जवाहरलाल नेहरू वुड बी वी वर ऑल मिसलेड हैड सरदार बींग देयर वी वुड नॉट बी सींग द प्रॉब्लम दैट इंडिया इज फेसिंग टूडे डिसीजन गलत हो जाते हैं और एक बात और होती है सजेशन तो 1942 में राजा जी ने भी दिया और उन्नीस में वही लागू हुआ मोथ ईट इन पाकिस्तान राजा जी ने यही सजेशन दिया था कि ये दीजिए लिल्ला ने कहा जिन्ना ने कहा वी डोंट वॉन्ट ए मोथ ईट इन पाकिस्तान उन्नीस में वही मोथ ईट इन पाकिस्तान हो गया उसके बाद होता ये है रैमजे मैकडोनल्ड के जमाने में रैमजे मैकडोनल्ड वॉज वेरी सिंपेथेटिक टू इंडिया इंडियन कल्चर एंड सिटीजेशन लेकिन एक चीज आप जान लीजिए गुडविल गुड विशेज एंड विशफुल थिंक इज वन थिंग हार्ड गुड पॉलिटिक्स इज एन अदर जवाहरलाल नेहरू बिकेम प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन 1946 और 1957 इन टेन इयर्स नॉट इवन वन कलीग ऑफ फ्रीडम फाइटिंग वॉज देयर इन जवाहरलाल कैबिनेट यू आर सच ए कंज्यूमेड पॉलिटिशियन that right from raja ji to lohia jayprakash everybody left raja ji the first governor general the second home minister leaves the congress so being consummate politician is one thing wishful thinking aur haathi ke daant apni jagah pe rehte hain lekin haathi ke asli daant ke niche jo gaya wo phir chura hi nikalta hai uska any other questions young people i always I have been teacher for 45 years. Always, I want you people to ask. Yes, sir. No, one second. If someone has raised their hand, they have not raised their hand. They have not stopped. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, my uh, question. Uh, it's not a, uh, actually a question. It's just uh, kind of. Uh, I just want your opinion to be shared. like uh, when we talk about like the Brit what britishers did to partition india and like you were talking about muslim league the politics of sir sayed ahmed khan allama iqbal etc so the importance somewhere uh, as i see as i have seen the azad muslim conference allah bakhsh somro etc who actually formed azad muslim conference in 1940 just after lahore resolution and it represented kind of a majority of muslims at that time because uh, there were more than two dozen parties in that so the problem arises then that when uh, government needed a representative of muslims they never allowed allah bakh somru in any such meeting there uh, malana azad uh, he says somewhere that i was amazed to see that why allah bakh somru is not being invited in any meeting and mohammad ali jinnah is being invited when he has not that kind of public support with him so how this kind of politics actually helped in projecting a few people as true representative of muslims and then reflected among muslim community that muslims also started to think that jinnah is our representative and we should talk to him for our problems that's what all about the divide and rule allah bakhs was not exactly convenient person for divide and rule concept and he was not a convenient person to propagate the idea of british and therefore he has not to be invited ha huh? ek bar maine kaha tha ki mujhe bhi invitation de dijiye कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन क्लब में एक मीटिंग चल रही थी तो मुझसे कहा प्रोफेसर साहब अच्छे दोस्त हैं कहा वी इनवाइट ओनली लाइक माइंडेड पीपल तो लाइक माइंडेड पीपल अल्लाह बख्श वाज नॉट फॉर पुटिंग द बिल एनीवे लेट मी टेल दैट साकिब साहब इज ए नाइस फ्रेंड ही डिड हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम जे एन यू इज इंडिपेंडेंट रिसर्चर एंड वन ऑफ द बेस्ट पार्ट इज इन ओज पर्शियन इन उर्दू सो बेसिकली कंसेंट्रेटिंग ऑन दो सोर्सेज एंड राइटिंग ब्लॉग्स क्वाइट ऑफ एन and they are worth reading for all of us any other uh, just one see one major problem is ki we only talk of partition of india in 47 what happened world over koreas were bifurcated the entire turkish thing was bifurcated very important how many new empire new kingdoms new nations were created in the world by the britishers 
and we don't look at it in global context what the Britishers were doing. We look at it only from the Hindu Muslim point of view rather than looking at it from an international scenario that what these colonial powers were trying to save their own imperialist interests after the war. Absolutely. This, uh, if I may just add, I am glad that uh, Professor Kapil Kumar has made this point. You know, in writing Indian history and in writing and, and in talking about it, we often ignore the context of world history. As he very rightly said, there is no doubt that the British had built up the Muslim League, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan and others for their separatist politics. But at the final moment in 1947, why is it that uh, the partition happened? It happened partly because it was in the imperial interest of the British. They were doing it all over the world, actually. Because by that time, obviously, the Cold War had started in 1945 and it was in their interest to have client states in every part of the world. And they knew that if a separate uh, Pakistan state is created in India, it will be under the rule of the Muslim League. And the Muslim League had been collaborating with the British. So they would obviously have, you know, uh, Pakistan as their client state. Whereas in India, it might be difficult. So it was, yeah, absolutely, 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 I would say, and you see what has happened is, in fact, we can also say how, uh, from their own national interest point of view, how far-sighted they were. I mean, they created Pakistan right on our northwestern borders. We have been, uh, you know, we have had a conflictual situation with Pakistan, which again was natural because the foundation of hatred on which Pakistan was created by the Muslim League, it was bound to lead to conflict after all. And we have faced conflict and look at it, who has been the beneficiary? In our immediate neighborhood, it is China, not its immediate neighborhood. China became a neighbor after occupying Tibet. But whatever it is, the fact is that China has been the biggest beneficiary of you know, the geopolitics that we faced as a result of the partition of India. And of course, now China is going against the West also. The West now wants to do something about it. But the reality is that the larger geopolitical game favored also the creation of different countries. I'm glad he made that point. I uh, think actually, I would like to add something. It's just uh, like add on that in 1938, uh, when uh, Subhash Chandra Bose became president of Congress, so he actually talked about that in future when uh, British will uh, leave the colonies, they will divide everything. He talked about Palestine and he actually said that an internal partition is necessary in order to neutralize the transference of power. We will, we will, we will hand and, now we have yeah. run completely yeah. out of uh, time because it's 4.30 already. So I don't think there is any other question, but these discussions we will continue over a cup of tea. We have had a wonderful presentation by you, sir. And uh, very, very uh, intense and uh, very informative discussion in which uh, all of us have participated. I thank uh, Professor Makhanlal. I thank all the participants for being present this afternoon and enthusiastically participating in the debate on this very important and ever relevant question. Thank you. Oh.